The RTX 4070 is one of the most hated GPUs in recent history, and the sales, or lack thereof, just demonstrates how this GPU does not appeal to gamers. But how well does its performance scale with power? And with the promotions and rumored price cuts, is that enough to turn the 4070 from bad to good? Let's get into it. The 4070 launched and nobody noticed, and the ones that did notice say that it is the worst GPU launched in a long time. On launch, I only saw the Founders Edition version of the 4070 sell out at Best Buy. All other models are available everywhere. You can even purchase the Founders Edition now directly from Nvidia. There are no shortages of the 4070 GPU. One week later, looking at Amazon's top selling GPUs, the 4070 has two models in the top 10, but only four in the top 50. The 4070 Ti also has two GPUs in the top 10 and six in the top 50. So the GPU that launched four months ago is selling better than the one that just launched. Newegg has zero 4070s in the top 25. They have four 4090s and four 4070 Ti's in the top 25. I said in my last video that the 4070 was not exciting at all, but I also wanted to look at how this GPU's generational performance compared versus previous 70 series GPUs over the past decade. Taking the data from Tech Power Up, this is the generational upgrade in each 70 series GPU since Kepler. The GTX 970 was a 43% improvement over the Kepler based GTX 770. The 1070 was a 47% improvement over the 970. The RTX 2070 with first generational hardware based ray tracing was only a 37% upgrade over the 1070. This GPU was a skip it GPU for many 1070 owners, and the RTX 3070 was a 50% improvement over the 2070. Now, the 4070 is only a 31% improvement over the 3070. This is the lowest generational upgrade in the past decade for the 70 series GPU. I also wanted to address the Super GPU or the 2070 Super. If we ignore the 2070, which many should have, and waited until the 2070 Super, then the increase in performance over the 1070 was 52%. That sounds fantastic until you realize that the 1070 launched in June of 2016 and the 2070 Super came out in July of 2019, a full three years later. And when the 3070 launched just 15 months later, it only provided a 35% uplift. For 2070 Super buyers, the 3070 and the 4070 are the weakest generational performance improvements of the last decade. Let's move on to performance and performance scaling. It's well understood that the 4070 is like a 3080 in performance at much lower power. I covered that in my video in January and in my last video. I was interested in this GPU since it is the smallest GPU released this generation with several two fan configurations now available. Finally, a GPU that is not gargantuan in size. In my previous videos, I thought the 4070 Ti from MSI could be the best. However, it is still over 300 millimeters in length. It's still a difficult fit in many small form factor cases. The two fan configuration is less than 250 millimeters long. Now this could be the ideal small form factor GPU. But the smaller the case, the smaller the power GPU you want to use to maintain good temps on your components. And with my testing of the 4070 Ti, I showed you could dramatically drop power and have a minimal effect on performance. So I wanted to test the 4070 to understand how this GPU scales with power. Starting at 200 watts, how low can this thing go? I ran Wildlife Extreme and adjusted the power slider in MSI Afterburner. The range allowed is from 50% to 110%. At the base configuration of 100%, it scores at 207 FPS. Dropping down to 90% power limit, the performance dropped just 2% to 203 FPS. At 80% power limit, the performance dropped 5%. At 70%, the performance drop is more significant at 11%, and it really starts to fall off a cliff beyond that point. So you can maintain 95% of your performance while dropping power by 20%. If you want to know why 95% is my number for performance, check out my 4070 Ti power scaling video where I explain that in depth. Said another way, if you start at the 80% power limit, you can increase power by 25% and will only achieve a 5% improvement in performance. 
going the other way and increasing the power limit another 10% above the base of 100%, and it achieves 209 FPS, or just 1% higher. From the curve, you are at the point of diminishing returns where you can put in 10% more power just to get 1% more performance. If we change out the power limit in percent for power in watts, while keeping 95% of your performance, this GPU will only consume up to 160 watts of power when playing GPU heavy games. 3080 like performance at 160 watts? That is amazing. Now let's take a look at what it does in TimeSpy, which is a 1440p DX12 benchmark, and we'll only look quickly at Graphics Test 1. First thing I notice is that the curve is a little flatter than Wildlife Extreme, just like it was with the 4070 Ti. At its 100% power limit, or 200 watts, it achieved 118 FPS. Dropping the power limit to 80%, or 160 watts, the performance dropped 3.5%, or just 4 FPS. And if you increase the power limit 10% higher than base, the performance increases less than 1% for one more frame per second. And even though this is a 1440 GPU, let's see what future games may do to it by looking at how it performs in Time Spy Extreme. At the base 100% power limit, or 200 watts, it achieves 54 FPS. This GPU is not able to get to the revered 60 FPS at 4K and falls short by 6 FPS. As a quick comparison, when I tested the 4070 Ti, it was only able to get 66 FPS in this test. Dropping the power limit to 80% or 160 watts, the performance dropped a similar 3.6% or just 2 FPS. And if you increase the power limit 10% higher than the base to 220 watts, the performance increases just 1%. So this 4070 has very similar power scaling characteristics as the 4070 Ti, and you can achieve 95% or more of your performance while dropping power by 20%. By the way, if you like videos like this, hit that like button, share this video, and consider subscribing. And let me know in the comments below if you are impressed with the 4070's efficiency. Will it get cheaper? Don't expect the MSRP to change. It will continue at $599. Jensen told his shareholders last August he was going to double the ASP, or average sales price, of his GPUs from $300 to $600, and the 4070 is just par for the course. If you're still shocked and surprised by Nvidia's GPU price increases this generation, I highly recommend you watch that video I made last fall based on what Jensen told his investors at the quarterly earnings call. I can tell you this is just part of his master plan, link above and below. And even though Igor's lab has reported that a $50 rebate program is in discussion for AIB partners, and now others are offering promotions to get people to buy, just keep in mind that these rebate programs or promotions are not permanent. They are temporary. They are designed to move existing stockpiles of GPUs off retail shelves for now. Once it's cleared, the MSRP remains in effect. To keep them from piling up again, NVIDIA is rumored to reduce production of the 4070. If I had to summarize the 4070, I would say that NVIDIA has given you the lowest generational upgrade in the 70 series of GPUs over the past decade. But NVIDIA has decided that was not enough. NVIDIA decided to increase the price by 20%. Even if NVIDIA kept the price at $499, a 31% increase in performance from one generation to the next is very meh. And the price increase? It's just insulting. Is it any wonder why no one is buying? Only a very, very, very small set of buyers should even consider this GPU. Someone who wants an efficient and powerful, that's 3080-like performance, in a small form factor computer that does not require a large power supply. That is a very niche group of people. But I also think NVIDIA is counting on those people who bought the 2070 or 2070 Super. Those people already paid an inflated price for Turing and will likely be okay with the 4070 for its performance and efficiency gains. I'll continue to test the GPU and show why I returned my 4070 Ti for this 4070. And I will also be comparing this directly to a 3070 to understand the benefits of the new ADA architecture. Finally, I'll be looking at the rumors for the upcoming 4060 and 4060 Ti GPUs. How will they compare in performance and performance per dollar, given NVIDIA will be releasing these GPUs soon? And more importantly, 
Will NVIDIA lower the price for those GPUs based on the poor response to the 4070? Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.